Shelby Wall Clinicians and welcome to another Friday question session. This Friday's question is a continuation of last Friday's uh, question about prebending files. When I did that tutorial regarding prebending conventional austenetic files, I obviously got a ton of questions. I can understand it was fairly confusing and uh, the distinction between the Martin Cetic and austenetic files. But one of the questions that came up is why do we even prebend files? It's very important to understand that whenever you try to negotiate around uh, tiny tight canals that curve a straight canal, a straight file is not a very uh, ideal type of an instrument to get around these kinds of curvatures. In, that, in those situations, a pre-curving, putting a J-hook on your file allows you to have to turn a passive and an active tip into an active tip that can negotiate, can explore, and can give you better tactile feedback about uh, how a file is moving in the canal. It's really the same idea if any of you have had the displeasure of having a problem with your plumbing, the plumber that uses a rotor router or one of these snakes has always a little uh, curve at the tip of, the, of this uh, uh, hook that they use in the plumbing in order to negotiate and get around the, uh, the, the bends in the pipes. So uh, this is basically the same idea with our instruments inside the root canals. Yes, we unfortunately are microscopic plumbers. The idea of using this kind of pre-curvature on an ITI file is also very important in specific cases. Now, for the most part, you really do not need to pre-bend your files, NITI files, uh, when you're using them. The pre-bending is basically limited to your hand files in smaller sizes when you're originally negotiating the canal. Once you've done that and you have a path, then your straight NITI files can follow the path easily. Especially, for example, in the case of the ESX file, because of the booster tip, that negotiation occurs 